What's going on guys, Hayden back. Today's video, I'm gonna be replacing the rear wheel bearings on my girlfriend's 2010 Mazda 3. Now, as far as my research goes, I believe this is good for the Mazda 3 from like 07 to 2012, somewhere around then, probably even the Sky Active versions, but also for a Mazda 5. So there's quite a lot of cars that this tutorial will be able to help you with, but I wanna show you guys the parts that I bought. So I have two boxes here and I wanna show you the wheel bearings that I picked up. I got this from Amazon. They are directly from TRQ. You've probably seen them on 1A Auto. I think it's an okay brand. It's not, you know, creme de la creme, the best car parts out there, but going on a car that's worth at most like five grand that has 170,000 miles, and I don't know how much more it will get, probably another 100K, but it doesn't need to be super expensive. It was $120 and a little bit of change for both wheel bearings, rear wheel bearings. And honestly, I have a TRQ strut and I have a TRQ CD axle and it's holding up just fine the past couple of months. So I have good things to say about uh, TRQ, but we'll see. Anywho, this is what the wheel bearing looks like, the rear wheel bearing. It is both the hub and the wheel bearing uh, compressed in one. Then you gotta put the sensor on the back. And I bought two of these. That's the first one. Here's the second one. Packaging got completely destroyed, but just wanna show you what it is that you'd be getting if you ordered it. This is the second one. They're identical, both sides, but I'm really curious to see how the, the old ones will sound. Now, since this car is from the rust belt, literally everything metal on this car has rusted. So it'll be quite a fight getting these off. But what I ended up doing, because my girlfriend's ones were virtually non-existent, and you'll see more in a second, I couldn't find them anywhere else used. And honestly, it didn't beat, the, the price didn't pay to buy it anywhere else. So I bought OEM Mazda rear uh, like brake shields or rear shields. So these are, these are like 40 bucks, I think for two. So for those wondering, the part number, for the rear brake discs are right here. BP4K 26261B, and they are identical. And then the part numbers on here, BHA54330, and that's the part number for the Torque TRQ rear wheel bearings. All right guys, so I'm in the 2010 Mazda 3. Hopefully you can hear me over the roaring sound of the rear wheel bearings, which we're gonna replace. I'm only going 50 miles an hour, and it's only coming from the back of the car. You can hear this loud turbulence, almost like a plane taking off. Now we're gonna go a little bit more in depth, see if we can feel any play in the bearings. Uh, I'm pretty certain that I know that this is a rear wheel bearing sound. So first thing you need to do is jack the car up. There is a jack point right in the middle of the rear subframe, which is what I used. Now for safety, I put two jack stands on either side of the car because better safe than sorry. And then you gotta take the wheel off. So, as you can see how beautifully rusty this car is, I am slowly working on fixing this up. But, with the wheel off, if we come behind it here, we need to get four bolts off, and they are in here. These four bolts have to come off, one, two, and three and four. Then we can take the hub off. So next up, let's get all this stuff off. A good habit is to WD-40 your caliper bracket bolts first. This way they come off easier when it's time. First thing we need to do is unscrew the caliper slider pins, which is a seven millimeter hex bit. Once these are both removed, we can move the caliper out of the way, making sure not to hang it by the brake line. I used an S hook, but a zip tie can work too, and then remove the brake pads. Check this out guys, you can now actually hear the sound of the rear bearings and they are 100% totally bad, need to be replaced. It, this is definitely what's causing that sound. Listen, this should be silent, but listen to this. Sounds like there's loose marbles in it, listen. It should not sound grainy like that at all. Using a 14 millimeter socket, remove the two caliper bracket bolts. If your rotors are rusty like mine, then spray some WD-40 in the holes to help loosen it up. Using a couple loving wax, it should come right off. Check it out one more time with that off, listen. Now, before we attempt to unscrew the wheel bearing bolts, it's a good idea to get the outer threads as clean as possible. So try to get off as much rust as you can. All right, so because these bolts are gonna be nearly impossible to get out, I mean, look at them. 
they practically look one with the car. We're gonna have to use some sort of heat. I don't like using a torch. What I do have is a magnetic heat inductor, which is a super cool, uh, you know, device that I got on Amazon, link in the description. And we're gonna use this to magnetically heat up those bolts, cool them down with some water, and hopefully we'll be able to back them out and maybe we'll use some penetrant as well. The induction heater is much safer and easier to control. The tool passes a high frequency current through an electromagnet. The magnetic field penetrates the bolt, generating electric currents inside of it and produces thermal energy. This thermal energy is what we call heat uh, and gets the bolt super hot. Also make sure to unplug the ABS sensor. Well guys, the plan worked. Bolt is officially off. It was actually incredibly easy. I'm actually surprised. Look at how clean it is. So we're gonna do that. I'll try to record a little bit more for the last three that I need to get off. As we know, heat makes things expand. So why would we want the bolt to expand? Wouldn't that make it harder to come out? Well, yes it would. And that's why we are rapidly cooling it down. There's a small space between the threads. And when the bolt heats up, in theory, it would crush the rust bond that's in between it and also whatever thread lock is on it. Then we can back the bolt out. With all the bolts out, the only thing holding it on is the rust. I used a little more WD-40 and went to town on it, making sure to hit it evenly around the bearing and not just on one side. God bless. And we are out. Oh, it's so bad now, holy cow. Now, before putting on the new one, it's a good idea to clean off the mating surface. You want this to be as clean as possible. And I used an angle grinder with a wire wheel as well as my drill. So I have just finished cleaning the actual hub on the car uh, using some brake parts cleaner to clean off all the scale and rust using my uh, you know, little wire wheel over here on a drill, which is great. And then for the heavy duty stuff, I used my angle grinder over there. But I'd be doing this car a disservice if I just left the bare metal like this, because it will rust again, granted now I'm in Florida. But for all those people with Mazdas, pick this up, rust encapsulator. It's like $30 a can, but it's worth it. What this stuff does, apply directly over surface rust. And then it says prevents rust from spreading, penetrates deep and cures fast. So you put this over this, all you gotta do is descale it first, but this surface rust is fine. Once this brake cleaner dries, I'm gonna spray this down with my rust encapsulator and that's going to cure this and keep this from rusting again and making this a much easier job if I have to replace the bearing in the future. Now it's time to reassemble. Make sure to take the ABS sensor off the old wheel bearing and transfer it to the new one. Then make sure to put a very light coat of anti-seize on the mating surface and wheel bearing to stop it from seizing again. So everything has been put back and I decided to get some new brake pads and rotors. It's cheap enough at AutoZone and with AutoZone's lifetime warranty and brake pads, because I bought my old ones at AutoZone, I'll be able to get these warrantied out for free 
when I give them back these old pads over here, but you can clearly tell this needed it. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was actually having trouble with this tool that I got in compressing. I didn't have enough force to compress the uh, piston back inside the caliper. So just a tip if you're doing it, I actually cracked the bleeder screw just a tiny bit, enough for it to leak, and I took some pliers and I was able to twist it righty tighty lefty loosey. So clockwise is what compresses it back in. And it worked super easy like a charm, which is funny because I ordered something on Amazon overnight to do this. And then I saw a 1A Auto video and she just did this and compressed it back in and it worked so much better and so much easier. So that's just a helpful tip compressing the, the piston back on, but that is it. So guys, that is how you install a rear wheel bearing on a 2010 Mazda 3 and a couple of other models. Super easy. It's also how do you put new brake pads and rotors on too. Uh, you know, there are some difficult things working on a fully rusted out car, but it worked and I can't wait to drive this. If I have enough time, I'll record it and I'll post it after. I gotta do the other side now, but you get the hint. Repeat and uh, rinse on the other side and you'll be good to go. But with that being said, make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I forgot the freaking brake shield. Pull me closer.